macOS Tahoe comes with the biggest design overhaul to Mac in years, but there are also a bunch of great updates to things like spotlight search, wallpapers, shortcuts, and a whole lot more. As usual, it was announced at WWDC in June, and now that we're through a few rounds of beta versions, it's finally at a place where I've been able to check out a lot of these new features, figure out how they work, and most importantly, what they have to offer. Some of them are definitely quite useful, others maybe not so much or feel like a work in progress. So today I want to dig into how everything currently works and how you can set them up and tweak them as well. So if you're wondering what macOS 26 is like in the real world, maybe you're considering installing a beta version or you're from the future and the update has just shown up for you and you're wondering if it's worth installing, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. When macOS Tahoe was introduced this June, I'd say that there were maybe not as many features announced as in past years, but the ones that were are likely going to be pretty impactful. First off, we got a brand new design with liquid glass, where in a general sense, things don't necessarily behave or feel much different, but Let's just go over what you can expect there because there is quite a lot that has changed. For starters, the corners on Windows and most UI elements for that matter are rounder with a larger border radius, but you see a lot more liquid glass or transparent elements as well. The native toggle and slider elements have been redesigned with it and you'll see a lot of new floating elements instead of sidebars and tab bars in apps like Safari, Mail, and Apple Music, where over the last few rounds of beta, the transparency of the glass is toned down a bit, but it is a nice refresh nonetheless. When you change the volume or the brightness from your keyboard, you might notice that that little UI panel has also changed, where there is now a more interactive slider that pops up that you can adjust. But probably the biggest change that I noticed related to liquid glass has to do with the control center, which has a bunch of new features. Again, things are obviously much more round and transparent, but new in macOS 26 is the ability to edit the controls, similar to iOS. You can do that by hitting edit controls and control center, or within settings, under menu bar, you can add or remove controls the way that works best for you. In terms of what you can add, there's a pretty wide variety of options within here between things like taking screenshots or video recording to finder functions and shortcuts. And not only can you add them to Control Center, but you can also push them up to the menu bar, which is kind of nice if you perform one of these actions on a regular basis. Looking at that menu bar, that is now transparent, which I personally like a lot more, but if it's not your cup of tea, you can head to settings, go to menu bar, and turn on show menu bar background. Within that settings menu, there are also some new ways of adjusting the appearance. Just like every other new macOS release, we've got some new wallpapers, where you can go to wallpaper and see the new macOS liquid glass option, a Tahoe landscape one, and something brand new this year. If you go to the appearance tab within settings, you can switch between light and dark modes like you have been able to for years, but under that, you'll see an option to change icon styles. Those again work very similar to iOS, where you've got light, dark, clear, and tinted options. I prefer dark icons myself, but if you do select tinted, that'll just take on whatever color you have selected as your theme, which, by the way, changing the theme color will by default also now change the folder color and finder, which is adjustable just below the icon style in your appearance settings. But another really useful thing that you can do is change the appearance of a specific folder. All you need to do there is control or right click on the folder and select a color option, or you can go to customize folder to both select a color and an icon or emoji for the folder. That might be really useful for organization or quickly sorting through folders visually. And speaking of organization, one thing that has been completely redone in macOS 26 is how you access or view your applications. Now, you can go to the Applications tab within Finder and access them that way, but if you ever used Launchpad from the dock, that is being replaced with something just 
called apps. If you click that, it's going to open up a window that is essentially just a modified view of Spotlight Search, and that'll contain all your apps, not only for Mac, but for your iPhone as well. You can see phone apps will have a little mobile icon in the bottom corner, and by default, at least right now, these are sorted alphabetically, but you can click on any of these categories at the top to sort them, or click the ellipsis in the corner where you can show them in a list or toggle off and on iPhone apps. I think that this is a lot more useful than Launchpad. I always found that I would just use Spotlight to launch most apps anyway, so this just feels like a much more natural way of doing things. Spotlight itself has also been updated quite a bit, and this is honestly my favorite new thing about macOS Tahoe. You'll notice if you hit command space, you're presented with some shortcuts for how you can search or what you can do inside of Spotlight. But on a standard Spotlight search overlay, you now have these four buttons on the right side of the prompt. The first is essentially going to bring up that same apps window. The second will search files. The third is for performing actions like sending messages or creating events or notes. And the last one is my personal favorite, which is a clipboard history that you can browse or search through. That can be really useful if you're copying things back and forth a lot and maybe you want to look back at something that isn't currently in your clipboard. And outside of that stuff, there are also quick keys for some actions like using SM for sending messages, which is nice. On top of that, Spotlight will be able to search and sort through far more information, whether that be reminders, messages, photos, and so on. And one of the coolest things about it is it's now context aware. So let's say you're in an app where maybe you don't know where all the actions or commands are in the menu bar. You can use Spotlight Search and type in whatever action you want to perform and it'll actually give you a list of actions that you can perform within the app that you have open, which is super useful. That's not the only thing that's been simplified with actions either. If you head to the Shortcuts app and hit the plus button to create a new shortcut, there is a brand new option in here where you can click Apple Intelligence and go to Use Model to create your own shortcuts with AI. The reason why this is so powerful is it's kind of the first step in making the creation of shortcuts a lot easier. I know personally, whenever I've made them in the past, it almost feels like you have to have some understanding of programming or at least the logic behind it to make anything meaningful. And with this, you can just tell it what you want it to do and get instant feedback. You can see after you've clicked use model, you're able to select a couple different model options. There's a model that runs on device, which is likely gonna be somewhat limited. The private cloud compute model will be more powerful where it'll use models on Apple servers to perform tasks you give it. And finally, you can use ChatGPT so long as you go through the setup wizard to hook everything up there. For the local and cloud compute models, they're not going to have access to real-time information in the same way that ChatGPT will, but you can set these up to be little chat prompts that do or ask you things that maybe you have stored in Control Center, or could be triggered by focus modes or all kinds of stuff. ChatGPT models are a little more powerful because you can access more real-time information, so Say if you want summaries of daily weather information or something similar, you can easily do that by creating a shortcut with a prompt, saving it, and running it via Spotlight, Control Center, or with a trigger. macOS 26 brings even more functionality from iOS as well with a new phone app that contains all the same features that iOS 26 will have. This is still gonna use your phone as a relay to get access to all the phone functionality, but within there you'll get spam filtering, hold assist, which essentially just holds your place in line while you're on hold without having to sit around on the call, and call screening, which is really neat. That will actually answer calls from unknown callers and ask them for more information where you can then determine if it's worth answering or not. And through that same phone relay, macOS will now show live activities just like your iPhone. The Messages app has also paralleled the updates to iOS as well, where you'll see it does have a slightly different UI. And if you go into a conversation, you can click a user or group and in the sidebar, scroll over to backgrounds and you can change the background color of that specific chat. You can also add things like polls now, which will be useful in group chats if maybe you want to get a vote on where to meet up or something, and you will now see a chat bubble when someone is typing within a group chat as well. 
Outside of that, if we move over to games, there is a new games app that everything gaming now lives under. You can see at the top, you've got the Apple Arcade if you subscribe to that. There's a play together tab if you want to play with friends or family on certain games. And then you have your gaming library, which will show you all your games, whether they're installed from the Apple Arcade or externally from apps like Steam. If you fire one of those up, you can hit Shift, Function, and C to open up the new gaming overlay, where you can adjust some of your settings, change your energy mode, and see a list of your friends, which is kind of handy. Beyond that, there's really only one area where we saw significant updates, and that is in regards to accessibility. macOS Tahoe adds the magnifier app that will use your camera to zoom in on the picture. Say, if you're trying to blow something up that you can't read or see properly, this will help out there, and if you head over to settings and go to accessibility, under read and speak, there is a new reader within there for system-wide reading if you need it. Also, within accessibility, just like on iOS, you can now go to motion and hit vehicle motion cues. And that's going to put these dots on the screen to help with things like car sickness. Say if you're using your MacBook in the back of a vehicle or something. Now, if you're not a fan of the liquid glass look, you can head back to accessibility and go to display. And you can turn that off by toggling on reduce transparency, where you do have some more options there if you feel like you need to increase contrast and things of that nature. Other than that, there's a couple minor things worth mentioning, like the Notes app being able to export Markdown from the Files menu. And you do have the Journal app available on macOS now as well, which I don't personally use, but I know a lot of folks will likely use that. There may be other things that I might be forgetting here, so feel free to drop a comment down below if there's anything that you would like to add. And just be aware that I am on a beta version, and it's highly likely that things will change or be added or removed, or just work a little bit differently as new versions are released. Also, if you are installing a beta version, make sure that you back up your machine beforehand, because outside of wiping everything on your Mac, there will be no way to get your data back if you want to go back to a previous version. And if this is your main computer, I would definitely be careful about using a beta OS, as some apps may not work quite the way that you want them to. But regardless, I do think that there is a ton of great new things in Tahoe. That is all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me start a petition to name next year's macOS version after a gourmet cheese, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.